Captain Zapata, has roll call been taken? Chief Red Corrigan. Chief Red Corrigan. Chief Red Corrigan. Chief Red Corrigan has answered his last alarm. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father of all, whose love and mercy is unending, we ask that your presence be with us and with the Corrigan family in this time of need. You have promised that you are a God of all comfort, and so it is, it is to you that we now turn for that comfort. Lord, I pray that your love and mercy will comfort us and that the truth of your scriptures will give us strength and hope. Your promises are many. The greatest is that of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. May the service bring and help us to honor our brother, Chief Ed Red Corrigan, and praise to you, Heavenly Father. Amen. <clears throat> when I am called to duty, God, wherever flames may rage, give me strength to save a life, whatever it be its age. Help me embrace a little child before it's too late, or save an older person from the horror of the fate. Enable me to be alert, to hear the weakest shout, and quickly and efficiently to put the fire out. And if according to my fate I am called to thee, please bless with your protecting hand my friends and my family. Red joined the North Patrick Fire Department on July 1st, 1968, and rose from firefighter to the rank of fire captain and was a current fire police lieutenant. Red was also a veteran of the United States Army. Edward Red Corrigan was named honorary chief at the direction of the chief's office for being a direct asset and intricate team player in his more recent years. Red was always there to lend a hand with whatever was needed, whether it be fire police resources, taking photos and documenting our aggressive training and being the recipient of the high training award for multiple years. Red held many other titles in our town and county, ranging from part-time Suffolk County police officer, captain of Brookhaven Town Public Safety, and past president of the following organizations, Brookhaven Town Fire Museum, Brookhaven Town Drill Team Captains Association, and the Brookhaven Town Fire Police Association. Red was also a full-time mechanic for the Holtzville Fire District for over 20 years as well as a former member of the Patrick Fire Department and the Patrick Ambulance Company. On a lighter note, I recently found out that Red used to give our current second assistant chief a smack in the back of the head and kept him in line when his old man, Eddie Welsh, was working. Rest in peace, Red. We'll miss you, and thanks for always being there. At this time, I would ask Chief John Mason to come up and present the award from the Brookhaven Town Chiefs.
breathe. In 1974, I met Ray Corrigan. He was a lieutenant in the North Patrick Fire Department. I was a young probie. I know, hard to believe. We became friends at that time. Neither of us had a walk with the Lord. In fact, neither of us did things that uh, pleased God. Fast forward, both of our lives were changed and changed for the better. We both accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. And in 2001, I rejoined the fire department. And there was my old friend, Red. But we also had uh, another connection here at First Baptist Church. Both of us now were walking with the Lord. Red was active here at church, serving on the trustee board, ushering, working in the Iwana program, and with the youth of the church, our church photographer, and helping in many other areas of the church. Nancy, you never really got to see the man too much, did you? On most Sundays, Red arrived at church before most of the rest of us. It's amazing how God had changed Red's life. <clears throat> we are brought here to remember our friend, and yes, we are sad. The Bible teaches in Ecclesiastes that there is a time to weep and a time to laugh. Well, while listening to Billy Graham's message the other day, he told a story about a Texan that was a Baptist, and I would like to share it. It goes like this. A Baptist Texan was at the horse racetrack, and he noticed a priest blessing a horse just before the race. The race went off, and the horse won. Then he saw the priest do this three more times, and again, the horses won. So he thought to himself, this is a sure thing. So he watched the priest, and for the fifth time, the priest blessed the horse before the race. So the Texan ran to the betting window and betted all his money that he had on that horse. So the race started, and the horse was out in the lead. And suddenly, foaming at the mouth, just dropped and died. Well, the Texan went to the priest and asked, what happened? The first four horses won. What happened to horse number five? The priest asked, are you a Catholic? And the Texan proudly said, no, sir, I'm a Baptist. The priest replied, well, that's the problem. If you were a Catholic, you would have known the difference between a blessing and last rites. <laughs> and I say that only because when we think of red, think of all the funny things he did and smile. Don't be sad. He's in a better place, and I know this because the Bible tells me. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Red believed and knew this promise. The Gospel reading for this evening is found in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. Hear now the words. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. 
So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. This is the word of the Lord. Here ends the scripture reading for this evening. The next reading will be the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, thy comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I just want to read the memory of a fireman's life. A fireman's life is one big surprise. Usually he laughs and sometimes he cries. There's always stress, toil, and strife, hoping he's good enough to save just one life. His family understands when he misses dinner, and if he runs out of church, don't think he's a sinner. Answering a call is tops on his list, regretting each one he's ever missed. He tries and tries but can't make us see the happiest men still work for free. Jumping from bed, fighting the cold, knowing what to do without being told. He rushes to the station, jumps on a truck, depending on his skills, never on luck. Putting his life on the line for an unknown friend, hoping and praying it will not be the end. The bravest men in the world, the title is fitting. They all do their best, never come close to quitting. Next time you see them, all their lights blinking, just take a minute to think what you're thinking. It's a hard job to show them you care and help them out with just a little prayer. Amen. You know, one last thing I want to say about my buddy Red. He would usually sit about seven or eight pews back on that side. And should I walk down that aisle, I usually got punched in the arm. <laughs> Those of you that know Red, that was his greeting. <laughs> we'll miss you, Red. We will. Let us close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Detail cover. Guys, two from each side. No walk out the middle.
I am thankful to have Ed as a friend. I'm even more thankful to have him as a brother. If there's one word that I believe describes Ed, it's the word faithful. He was a faithful husband and father, grandfather. He's a faithful member of the fire department. He was a faithful member of our church and faithful to God. I believe that when Ed entered the presence of Jesus, his Savior, he heard those words that we all long to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Join me in prayer. Father, I thank you. We stand here, we gather together collectively to thank you for the life of Ed Corrigan. As we mourn his death from our perspective, we also celebrate his life. and We celebrate his home going. We know now, Lord, that he is in your presence, that he's with you. We thank you for the promise of eternal life for those who put their faith and trust in your son, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior. We thank you that we can have the assurance without any doubt that when we pass from this life, we enter eternal life with you. And it is by your grace, through faith in your son, that we can have this assurance. And we thank you that Ed had that assurance. We thank you that in his life, he displayed a commitment to you, an example of faithfulness to your church, Thank you that we can honor him today. Lord, we pray for the comfort and blessing for Nancy and her children, the extended family. Lord, we pray that you would comfort them with the comfort that only you can provide. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Are you encouraged with the hope of the gospel? I pray that you are. If you do not know Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you do not have that assurance, please trust in him today as Ed did. Thank North Patchog Fire Department and uh, George Walter is their chaplain. Uh, they have done uh, many, many things behind the scenes, including arranging transportation uh, for Nancy to be here and a number of other things. So I just want to thank them for that. I'll definitely take the opportunity to write a thank you note to them. Red asked that we sing, he actually left instructions, and he asked that we sing a number of songs. Well, you know, come on, you know. <laughs> this is a song that, uh, that harkens way back, 
but it's a great song. It's called Shall We Gather at the River? You'll see the words up on the screen. colorings. This one I, I think of so much, not only because of the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, but very soon we will be having a Good Friday and then Easter Sunday morning. And then if you knew Ed, if you knew Ed, I'm probably not even going to have to say anything about this particular one, okay? Mr. Ed Corrigan was rarely seen without some kind of a camera. We have a program here on Friday nights called Awana, and uh, we have different activities. And one is a Grand Prix where the kids make the little, little box cars and they run them. And he would be taking all the pictures. Um, he was taking pictures even when you didn't want him to take pictures, you know? <laughs> Catch you in those rare moments. <laughs> and he would come up to Suzanne or I, and he'd be like, and, and it wasn't just enough to take the pictures. Many times he would blow them up to <laughs> larger sizes. I want to just say a few things about bread, and then I want you to hear uh, from a few other people. Um, I have to tell you something that Probably you guys don't know, but, uh, but he certainly reminded me. See, in our church, we have a thing that we don't have weddings on Sundays just because it would be like a, a, a bit of a headache to try to undecorate, redecorate, get everything together. So we kind of have this thing, and it, it's been on the books since uh, before Pastor Southerd. But Ed would always remind me that he and Nancy were the only couple to get married in this church on a Sunday. And that was because Pa Jett, which is another name, because Pa Jett let Pastor Southern know that they were getting married on a Sunday. Is that not right, Nancy? <laughs> The Bible tells us 
that the greatest title is the person who seeks to have no title. Because the Bible tells us that in the kingdom of God, the greatest is the servant. In fact, the one title that um, Pastor Jim referred to was when we reach heaven, it's not welcome Ed Corrigan, chief, and all those other titles. What is the title that we're welcomed with? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Um, Ed was not a person who wanted to be on the platform, uh, wanted to speak. But I'll tell you, there is a place over in the back building, a chair, actually, where every Friday night, um, Ed would be, and he would be there uh, sitting. We have a desk, and he would be sitting kind of uh, right next to that desk, uh, welcoming the kids, ready to take a picture, um, or whatever it might be. Um, and he was there early. Uh, we still have that program, and we would have to take temperature checks, and we'd have to have the, the different protocols, and he was right there. And um, Ed, though, also, he would work in the kitchen. He would, he would do whatever needed to be done because the Bible tells us that the greatest title, you know, this world has a thing about titles, but for, for the believer, the greatest title is to have no title, and that's the title of being a servant, and that truly was Ed Corrigan. Um, I've asked, because he was such a, a big part of our Friday night kids ministry at called Awana, I've asked Mr. Norm, who has uh, been our Awana commander, uh, I'm not even going to try to guess, I believe it's like 40 years, uh, uh, 45 years, 42, uh, okay, I'll let you, 48 years. And I just wanted you to hear uh, from somebody from church. Uh, and then you're going to hear from a, a couple of the family members. Good evening, everybody. As Pastor was talking, I have a larger one. Okay. Ed made them in all sizes. And this one happens to be from May 3rd, 2019. And he enjoyed doing these. There's not a child in the Iwana program that uh, does not have one of these at home or many. And there was a one time that what he would do is he would bring in a whole bunch of blanks and he challenged the boys and girls to take it home and to color it in and then bring it back and he would take a look at them the following week. And it was amazing, amazing how well these young people did. And to answer your question, Pastor, this is year 53 for them. <laughs> but it's, it's all about our youth. That, that's my life goes around. Uh, that these are our future leaders. If what we want out of them tomorrow, we know what we got today. And it's nothing to really brag about. But we want them to be better and well prepared. And what better way than through the word of God. Awana stands for approved workmen are not ashamed. And what that simply means that uh, when we accept the Lord as our own personal savior, he's giving us, every last one of us, every last one of you sitting there, the opportunity, as Pastor Steve had just said, to be a servant. Every last one of us has a talent. When Pastor Steve texted me the other day, I answered it immediately. He said, I would like to have you speak 
at uh, Ed's uh, service. I said, I would love to. And he gave me an hour and a half to speak. <laughs> so, oh, that wasn't, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard for me to hear, you know, what, what he's actually saying to me. Not that long, okay. I want to talk about Nancy also. Nancy was one of our leaders for many, many years also. And she was much loved by the children. She had a concern for the children. And she would mentor them and talk to them. And her and Ed made such a great team that uh, and they're still a team. They will always be a team. That's something that never goes away. But Ed was the same way. And Nancy, I want to thank you for your years of service. And anytime you're ready to come back, <laughs> we, we need more people. We have between 20 and 30 leaders at this point in time because we're meeting on a different time schedule uh, because of the COVID and all that kind of stuff. But uh, the kids are still coming out and they're following all the rules with masks and everything else like that. How well behaved they are is just blows your mind. And you come down any Friday night. You're not allowed to, though, because the way we're running programs this year is only the children can come in. And Pastor Steve came up with a plan with a group of the men of the church that uh, the cars line up, they drop the kids off, and then they go. In, and then when they come back, they get on another line, and we have the LIT, that's a leader in training, the high school young people, and they monitor all three areas, downstairs and the two back buildings and the nursery over here. And when those parents come up, they will just uh, wire to that person and they'll say, okay, your children are ready, your children are ready, and then the, whoever's in the buildings will tell the kids, your parents are out there. They come out to the back driveway here, they get in their cars, and they go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's working so beautiful. It's just unbelievable. And this is all because of the work of our servants. Every single leader that we have, and Pastor Steve has recruited more because there's issues with uh, health uh, situations with uh, some of our leaders that can't make it at this point in time. But he has recruited others. And they come in like they've been doing it for 100 years. They know exactly what our goals is, is to teach the boys and girls the word of God. The Iwana program, just so you know, is a worldwide ministry, and it's the only youth program, and this is not because I'm involved in it, but this is the only youth program that is entirely dedicated to the memorization of God's word. And these boys and girls, how they memorize those verses, and they will always remember. I have, uh, you know, over the years had uh, young people come back and say they're involved in a, a want a program in their church, wherever they happen to be. But getting back to Ed, Ed has been, started off as a leader, and then he worked in the game period times. And he was just an exciting person. The kids just loved him. And I did have one problem. You know, we always have the good side and the not so good side. All right, it wasn't really bad, but he had what I said was a counting problem. All right, because he would come up at the, the next week after he would take his pictures and he would hand me an envelope. I'm not kidding you, I'm not kidding you, you know, maybe a hundred or so pictures. I said, Ed, I got no place to put all these pictures. So to get him to come down in numbers was very, very hard, but he loved it. And if the, he saw the kids uh, gathering together, he would take some of their pictures and talking to the parents, if they said, oh, that's cute, I would, he would go home and make a copy for them. Now, there's a, a big expense, you know, to something like this. But it didn't bother him. 
He wanted to take care of the boys and girls. Another side that a lot of people didn't realize about Ed, if he saw a kid out of sorts a little bit, he would come to me and say, Mr. Norm, you know, could you talk to them? He had already talked to them and tried to mentor them and find out what their problem was and everything else like that and explain it to me. And then I would talk to them, I would get, talk to one of their leaders and we would take care of the situation. I have such a beautiful, phenomenal team over the years. You know, how many leaders I've had over these many years is just unbelievable. But they were all phenomenal people. They were there for the right reason, reaching out to the boys and girls that they will have a better life. I love taking the pictures and, uh, you know, he would take pictures all over church and everything. And he was a worker, worker, worker. Because I, before this whole thing hit and we had bagels and coffee downstairs and everything, I would work down there in the kitchen on a Sunday morning. And Ed came up to me one day and said, you know, Mr. Norm, I'd like to help you out doing that. And all of a sudden, he took over the coffee area. And, you know, I was doing, helping out with other things down there and the bagels and whatever else had to be done. But he was a giver. And he always was smiling about it. And the things I know about his family, you know, I could just stand up here for a couple of days and telling you things. Because Ed was a type of pink, you always knew about his family. Because when they would go down to visit or, you know, whatever, he would always bring in backup pictures of the family so we know all about everything that you did and you didn't do and what you, he would like to have seen you do and all this kind of thing and he was always doing it with a smile and there wasn't a person that i ever complained about oh here comes ed with all these pictures again <laughs> all right they loved it because he was proud of his family and we're proud of ed i'm going to miss him terribly because now I gotta find another photographer. But how do you replace somebody that is, going back to what Steve said, a quote servant, all right? You didn't have to tell him. And if I wanted a picture of something real quick, I would just look around and he always had his eye on me, probably because I'm so bad. You can ask Pastor Steve, he'll tell you all my bad things about you. That'll take you a couple months though. And I just go like that. And there he comes running down with his camera and everything. And if there was some special picture I wanted, he would make a bigger copy, like you had said, Pastor, and we would put it up on the uh, wall over there in the Awana program. And this was laying out there, and I chose this one because I'm gonna take and put his picture on it, because even today, some of the kids always ask, you know, I don't see Mr. Ed with his camera. You know, are we gonna get our pictures taken this week? So I gotta replace him, but uh, how I'm going to do that, only God knows. All right, he loves children, he loves the leaders, he talks to the leaders all the time, and he loves the games, he watches the games, takes pictures of the games, and shots that you wouldn't even believe. I mean, I could fill up this whole church with all the pictures that Ed has given us over the years, all right? He's always helpful to everybody. If he sees, uh, you know, down at church when we had the uh, bagels and the coffees downstairs, if some of the ladies would have, probably he would take their cups of coffee and, you know, take it to wherever they were going to sit and everything like that. And also, all the events of the church, he would be taking pictures, pictures, pictures. And like Steve said, whether you wanted your picture taken or not, be ready because you're, it's going to be taken and it's going to be shown. Okay. We don't put them up on the, on the high screen. We have done that a couple of times, different events and everything. Uh, <clears throat> Ed, we're going to miss you terribly. Uh, all the leaders, they always ask. And then when you passed, the leaders were coming up to me on Friday night and said, uh, what are we gonna do without Ed? I said, well, God tells us life will go on. 
with or without us, because we're all going to have that day where we're going to meet our Lord and Savior, and that's going to be the greatest day in our lives. Not so great for the people who are still here, but they know, those that believe, they know that one day they will be home with their wives, their sons, their daughters, their grandchildren, and everything. So all we have to do is believe and know that we are a servant of the Lord. Ed loved his wife and his children and uh, his family. He always talked about them. There wasn't a Friday night that he didn't have something to say from a phone call or from a picture, from a letter or something like that. And Nancy being in the nursing home, he would come back with stories about, you know, him and her there at the nursing home. It was a beautiful thing to see that life was still going on for him no matter what. At one time, he was a bus driver for one of the companies here in uh, uh, Suffolk County. And he shared all these things with us because kids was his life. And he loved talking to them. And he would talk to some of the kids on his bus routes and they would start coming down to the Iwana program. And that's what it's all about. Every last one of us sitting here today, the children that we know in our neighborhoods and everything else like that, invite them to the Iwana program. We're open. And it was tough when we were not meeting because the leaders, Mr. Norm, when are we gonna come back? When are we gonna do this? When are we gonna do that? So we came up with a plan that's working fantastic. Uh, what else can I say about Ed is you'll never find a worker like him again because he wants you to be smiling all the time. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to know that he cares about you and that he will always talk about the Lord to you and said that he has all the answers for all of us no matter what we're going through. And we're all going through different things at different times, especially during this COVID uh, situation and everything, our kids in school, et cetera. The whole nine yards, but if we give it to him and trust him. So Ed, before I can see you, What some of you might not know is that the one that Mr. Norm showed you, the more complicated ones, the reason he did that is because he would sit by Nancy, wherever she was, whether it was at a nursing facility when that was allowed, and he would sit there in color, and he would spend that time with her. And he took up doing those because he loved to spend time with you, Nancy. And he would color those in as he spent that time there. And uh, he loved you very much. I'd like you to hear from um, a couple of the family members. Uh, Mike is going to speak and actually represent a few of the family members. And then Melissa is going to follow him. Everyone that knew my father-in-law knew that his pride and joy were the grandkids and the great-grandkids. And like Norm had mentioned, we probably went through 5,000 pictures <laughs> to get these few that you have up here. There was just so many. And everyone that he had a chance to meet, he showed the grandkids and the great-grandkids. And I just want to share a couple brief reflections from the kids and the, from us as a family, and especially the grandkids 
and the great grandkids. And this is from Mikey, the oldest of the grandkids, and his son David. And these are their personal reflections of their grandfather. Grandpa, so many memories and thoughts of you, I don't know where to begin. The ones I remember the most are Fourth of July's and Thanksgiving's. You were and will always be such a big part of our holiday season. I remember playing in your backyard with Andrew, Melissa, and Danny, and being afraid of the big barn in your backyard. <laughs> I was afraid of that barn also. <laughs> You were always very gracious and gave more than you ever needed to. You raised my mom to be the best woman I've ever known. And she carries the same love and compassion that you did. We love you, Grandpa, and we miss you. And this is from Andrew and his wife, Jess, and the four little ones, the great grandkids, Aliyah, Ravenna, Wesley, and Eilish. And they shared a poem and then some of their brief reflections. We little knew that morning that God was going to call your name. In life, we loved you dearly. In death, we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you you did not go alone, for part of us went with you the day God called you home. You left us peaceful memories. Your love is still our guide. And though we cannot see you, you are always at our side. Our family chain is broken. Nothing seems the same. But as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. And there were some of the reflections that they have. Grandpa loved so deep and with so much emotion. He never missed any of our kids' birthdays. He would always call. And when talking about our four kids, he would instantly get emotional. He loved our kids so much and always let us know. His great-grandkids were his pride and joy, and he shared them with everyone. The last time we were able to see him was at our wedding, where he was our photographer. <laughs> it is such a special memory for us that we get to share with our kids and keep his legacy living on. While he isn't physically here on earth with us, we know that his memories will live on, and we are so blessed to have had him for the time that we did. We love you, Grandpa, and we can't wait until we are united again. We love you always and forever. Andrew, Jess, Alaya, Ravenna, Wesley, and Eilish. Hi, I don't like speaking in front of people. <laughs> Even though I was a teacher, I don't, adults scare me a little bit. <laughs> um, so I'm Melissa, if you don't know me, I'm Ed's only granddaughter. Um, the youngest of the three, but Eric is the youngest of the grandchildren. Um, so, here we go. And I guess I get my coloring from him because I'm always coloring also, all the time, every day. Um, so, okay. On behalf of my grandma, my parents, and the rest of my family, we want to thank you for being here today to honor this great man who we all have come to love and cherish for many years. All of us have known him in a variety of roles. Husband, dad, grandpa, great-grandpa, cousin, uncle, and a great friend. I have been privileged to know him as my grandpa, and I was his mouse. <laughs> there are so many memories I can share, and it's hard to pick a favorite, but something that I will always remember and cherish is Thanksgiving, and him carving the turkey every year, and him and I sneaking some of the skin for ourselves. Recently, I've learned something new about my grandpa, actually the past few days. Being back in New York, these past couple of days, we've had interactions with many people. I've always known my grandpa to be very involved and devoted to anything he did, but I never knew how much of an impact he has made with so many people. 
Everyone that we have encountered these few days has spoken so highly of him and told of how kind and caring he was. He was a great man and loved our family so much. He will truly be missed. We got, he got to meet my husband, Jared, only once, and he loved him like his own grandchild, always called and asked how we were. I only wish that he would have been able to meet his newest great granddaughter, my daughter, Everly. He would have loved her so much and vice versa. Something they had in common is their red hair. <laughs> I really didn't want to have a redhead child, but <laughs> God, I got her. Um, a lot of people knew him as Big Red, and in honor of my grandpa, we call Lil Everly Little Red now. Um, being Christians, we have the assurance we will see him again in heaven one day, and that's what keeps us going. My grandpa lived a great life, captured so many memories, cared for so many people, and he will be missed by all who knew him. We love you so much, Grandpa, and can't wait to see you again. And now I'm going to read on behalf of my mom, um, Ed's, one of Ed's daughters. Where to begin? 56 years of memories. All I keep coming back to is one of my husband and my favorite Christmas movies, It's a Wonderful Life. I knew we didn't have a lot of money growing up, but Dad provided a great childhood for my sister Laura and I. One great memory was when we would go camping with friends, which was always an adventure with two girls. Thank goodness my sister was the tomboy. Many of you might wonder why he was called Red. I kind of gave it away in mine. Um, he got his name Red from his red hair when he was younger. We could have changed his name to White when he got older, when his hair color changed, but he always stayed Red. Dad worked hard all his life. He would work all day, come home, eat dinner, then off to the North Patchog Fire Department. We'd be in bed before he got home. He volunteered at the fire department for 53 years. I resented them when I was younger for taking up so much of my dad's time. But what they have done for our family this past week has been unbelievable. I see them in a new light. They loved him as much as he loved them. They have come alongside me and my family and become part of our family. I am truly grateful and blessed. He has so many friends that love him. Thank you all, he would be honored. I don't know if he even realized how many lives he has touched. He loved his grandkids and great-grandkids. They were his life, like you've heard. <laughs> and he always asked for pictures of them, as many of you have probably seen and now heard. Growing up, he always had a tough exterior, but after we had kids and they had kids, he was so emotional and turned into a soft teddy bear. When COVID hit in March of last year, it was so hard when he couldn't get in to see my mom. He would go stand outside her window every day. He did not want me to call 911 on February 13th when he was sick because he didn't want my mom to worry. His newest hobby was coloring, <laughs> which if you were close with my dad, you received one of his many pictures. Um, and as you've seen, we have some on the back table. Um, so please take one when you leave. He would love to know that you all have had one. We will all miss him more than he could imagine, and he truly had a wonderful life. We grieve because we lost a husband, dad, grandpa, great-grandpa, but we rejoice knowing he is not suffering anymore and completely at home with our Heavenly Lord. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes about what is the real value in life. There's a story that Jesus tells in Luke chapter 16, and I want to read it. And I, I in reading it, I just want to make some comments, uh, but I want to give you a little background. Jesus was always telling stories because not only would the story stick in people's minds, but he would make he would make a point through the story that he didn't like totally have to hit people over the head with, but the story was very clear. And so he's going to tell this story about a, a rich man and a Lazarus. And um, the contrast that he's making here is not people who, that didn't know God, but people, the rich man represents people who knew God, but they had enough of the stuff of this world that they didn't really need him. And then there was Lazarus who had nothing. And this story is about how actually death and what comes after death 
is what tells us what the true value of life is. So I'd like to read that to you and then just make a few comparisons. Um, I, I want to say this. Red was not a rich man. But he had a rich character in the way that he was able to serve and love people. Um, not many lawyers are going to be knocking down the door to deal with his estate. But he was a rich man when it came to the things that last past this life. And I want you to hear this story. There was a rich man who was clothed, Jesus is telling the story, clothed with purple and fine linen, that was their best in those days, and feasted sumptuously every day. And as, at his gate lay a poor man, Lazarus, covered with sores. So the, the rich man is covered with purple and scarlet, and Lazarus is covered with what? With sores. He desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. So the rich man had had the food, he had the crumbs. And even the dogs came and licked his sores. And the poor man died and was carried by angels to Abraham's side. The rich man died and was buried. And in, hell, in Hades, or hell, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and he saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. He said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me Send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your lifetime received good things, and Lazarus in like manner bad things. But now he is comforted, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us a great chasm has been fixed in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross over to us. Then he said, then beg, I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come to this place. But Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. He said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. And he said, e, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. What's interesting is Jesus is not talking to people who didn't know the scriptures, who didn't know the Bible. In fact, he's talking to a group of people called the Pharisees. They, they actually were very religious people, but they had focused their things on the, wrong, on the wrong things. They had come to love the things of this world. So he's speaking to people who actually know what the Bible says, but yet they have put their trust elsewhere. It's an amazing, it's an amazing comparison. Lazarus didn't have enough and could only be dependent on the scraps and ultimately only dependent on God. And yet the rich man had so much that at that point he didn't think he needed God. The rich man has great clothing, Lazarus is clothed in rags. And the only compassion that he finds is ultimately the dogs who lick his sores. The rich man dies. And at that point, the story, the account that Jesus tells here, totally flips. Because Lazarus, who has been a no-name in this life, is carried into the presence of God by the angels while it very starkly says of the rich man, what happens? He's buried. We almost get the picture that he probably wasn't liked by too many people because they're not even mentioned as having noted that of his passing. But then we get to the afterlife and the rich, the rich man is now really, you know, in, in this life, Lazarus was was begging at his table, and in, in the afterlife, the rich man is begging Lazarus to dip his finger in just for a drop of water. But Jesus tells them something very important. He says, listen, 
If they haven't heard Moses and the prophets, they're not, they're not going to hear if even one rose from the dead. You know what he's saying there? He's saying, listen, I have sent my message to you all. And he's speaking to people, Pharisees. He was speaking to people who knew the scriptures. And he says, listen, they need to hear that message. And if they are rejecting that message, then they're not going to hear if even one would rise from the dead. The rich man, it is very interesting that suddenly his whole focus has has flipped. Whereas he was not concerned about anybody before death, he suddenly looks at his condition. He says, boy, I don't want anybody to come here. I, I, I have five other brothers. Can you at least send somebody back? Amazing that if all of us could cross over, see where we stand before God, because the Bible says that we're all going to stand before God. And we will have to give an account. And the account will not be whether you've been a good person or not. The account will be, do you know Jesus Christ? Have you confessed Jesus Christ as your Savior? Have you asked to have your sins forgiven? That is the account that will be given. But he says to him, listen, even if somebody rose from the dead and went back to them, can you imagine if somebody walked into your living room that had been dead for... But he says to them, listen, if a person doesn't want to believe, then they'll find some way of explaining even that phenomenon away. And here's the interesting thing. There is one who has risen from the dead. There is one, and his name is Jesus Christ. And when he came back, he explained... By the way, there was also another one named Lazarus that rose from the dead. And do you know what they what they wanted to do with him? They 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 were like, we got to get rid of him because if people see Lazarus, they're going to believe in Jesus. So they actually put a hit out on Lazarus. They they're like, we got to get rid of this guy because he's the evidence that Jesus is able and he is truly who he says he is. But ultimately, there was one who came back from the dead. The Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and he is the one who has come back and he, he warns us all. And yet many, even as is warned here, even having those words from the scriptures, from the Old Testament scriptures, from the New Testament scriptures, from Jesus' disciples themselves that says, don't put your value in the things of this world. They all leave. They're all gone. Ed has awards that are even given to him in the last week, in this last night. None of those awards go to heaven. But there is one thing that is so much more important. What will will a man gain if if he gains the whole world and yet loses his soul? What will he give in exchange for his soul? There is no currency after death. God doesn't make deals after death. Then there is only one currency, and that's the sacrifice and the blood of Jesus Christ that was given so that you and I could be forgiven. The only award, and it's not an award, it's a gift, is the gift of salvation, and that that makes us rich in eternity and not in the riches of this world, but in the things of God. And this amazing story was, touched, was, was told with, what, with such vivid words. Jesus, usually his stories were shorter, but they were, taught, they were said with such vivid words because he was truly appealing to them and appealing to people who had a religious background. Because it's not about a religious background. It's, it's not about not needing God. And, and there are many in this world who don't, who don't think that they need God. It's about knowing that after death, we must all appear before God. Ed's done that. 
And the words were said, well done, good and faithful servant. And I pray that you too will know the answer to that. Um, It's something that Ed lived for, and it's something that I'm thankful that George Walters mentioned in his eulogy, that Ed's life and his life were totally out of sorts. And then they came to know Jesus Christ, and God began to turn their whole character around, because that's what God does. He turns our eternity around, he turns our character around, he takes us from not needing him or, not, or thinking we don't need him to realizing how much we really do need him. And that's what we're here to remember tonight is that Ed Corrigan, the greatest title he has is servant. We're going to close um, with um, How Great Thou Art, and then I'm going to pray. And uh, I thank you all for being here. Uh, I thank the, the North Patchog for their service. And um, thank you for being here through this. And Nancy, we love you. And we're, we're so glad that you were here this whole time. We know it's been a long day. Would you stand with me, please? that as Jesus told this parable, he knew the answer was going to be his own death and resurrection. We pray, Lord, we thank you for Red. We thank you for um, his love for Nancy, for his children and grandchildren. We thank you for the fact, Lord, that he knew Jesus as his Savior. We pray that you would bring your comfort to our hearts. Uh, We know, Lord, that that this has been a very hard time. We know that he loved Nancy, and 
the evidence is that all those things that he colored, just being with her or not being able to be with her, but being want, wanting to be with her. Thank you that they, too, will one day meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.